G'day folks, Rod Moore here from Learn to Paint Academy. Welcome to another episode of Learn to Paint TV. Really excited about this week. We're going to do a, a little country lane in uh, country New South Wales. It's got a beautiful backdrop of mountains, some nice trees, and this path winding its way up through some grassy fields. And I think you'll enjoy this one. Um, photo I've taken on one of my many uh, trips and camping and so on. Um, and as you can see, it's got a beautiful lead in with the, the dirt road running up there, got a high horizon line, and this nice little sneaky view of the uh, mountains in the background there, sort of a bluey gray mountain, a little bit of sky of clouds, and they've got this shadow side of the tree here, and then the light side of the trees here. So it's going to make a nice little composition, I think, and uh, I think you'll enjoy this one. So step one of the more method of painting is to get a basic drawing in. And what we want to do with the drawing is just find the big shapes in our subject, and then map those out on our canvas with a rough placement of where they're going to go. Okay, so we're not gonna look for a highly detailed drawing. We're just gonna make a few marks so we know where our big shapes are going to go. And this is the beauty of the Moore Method. It simplifies the drawing part down so that anybody, regardless of school level, can get started with their painting, right? So I'm gonna take just a really crusty old bristle brush for my drawing. Um, I'm not gonna to fuss too much about it. Dip it in some water, and I've got it here ultramarine blue and you can see my blue's running a little bit, um, and some permanent crimson. Now just a quick note, I put this up on a vertical so that you can see it on the camera. Make sure you've got yours on a flat surface. It's not the ideal way to work um, the way I've got it there. I'll just do that so that you can see. Okay, so I'll just make a nice liquid runny mix of that. Just a, a dark with those two colors there. And the first thing to do is to get our horizon in. Now this horizon line, it's um, sitting above the halfway mark. So if we said the halfway marks are roughly there, right? Roughly. We want this horizon line to be sitting up a bit higher than that. So probably running around about through there. Now again, I'm not doing a perfect line. We're doing a landscape painting here. There's no perfect lines in nature as such. When you look at a landscape from a distance, the lines are uneven. It runs downhill. In fact, it does run downhill. We'll just taper it off that way a little bit so we know. Okay, now the next main line to get in is going to be that hill line in the background. And it's going to run around about that height and it runs fairly flat through to just past the halfway mark. Then it takes a fairly steep rise up and sort of flattens out there and then runs that way. Okay, so that's a little bit of a feature that people who know this area um, in the Kapiti Valley, they will recognize that. Okay, and then in this section here, we've got some rocky escarpments and a few bits and pieces, which we won't worry about now because we're just doing a rough little drawing. Okay, so so far we've got two lines, that one and this one here. Now, why have I stopped there? Because simply there's going to be some trees that sort of fit in there and they're going to run down to around about that level there with some trunks and so on. And then we're going to have some other trees in here, which are going to run down to around about there. Okay. Again, don't fuss too much with this, right? Just get in some basic shapes here. And on this side, we're going to have our dark shapes for our trees here. And we're just going to just pop those in. I'm going to leave a little bit of a breathing room there so that we can get some of that, uh, mountain into the tree there and then it's going to come down it's going to not not come as wide as the tip of that mountain okay and then it tapers in and then underneath that we're going to have a shadow the sun's coming from over here coming through this way into the painting okay so is it going to be a shadow that's going to be cast it's going to run across the path there there's going to be some tree trunks and things in there. Okay, so far so good. Now, what we're going to do here is around about here. Okay, not in the center. Okay, I'm off center a little bit, or at least I hope I am. I'm going to make another little mark there. And then this path, it comes partly that way. Okay, and that one's fairly straight. Then this tapers out that way a little bit. In fact, it keeps tapering out that way and it runs through to there, okay? So it probably needs to be narrower at the top there. I'm going to just narrow it down to there and then I'm going to taper it that way. 
And then this one is going to come to here and it's going to widen right out there. And that's, that's how we're going to create a sense of uh, depth and so on in the painting. We'll, we'll reassess it as we go. But this is the basic feel of that path. Okay. So we're going to do step two, which is our blocking in, which means we're just going to get color down in the right tone and the right value and so on. Um, we're not going to fuss with this, we're just going to move quickly, use lots of paint, big brush, and start to block in the shapes that we've just put up on the canvas. Okay. So in order to do that, I've got my three primary colors. I've got my ultramarine blue, permanent crimson, yellow ochre, and our titanium white. And those three colors, we're going to do 90% of the painting with those three. I'm going to start with this mountain in the background because it's a bluey gray. I need to get the right value and the right uh, saturation or graying off of that. And then I'm going to work forward to this tree, these trees, then this tree here, then this one, and then this main tree. And there needs to be a value shift with each of those in order to create a sense of atmospheric perspective. But we're also going to look at the color temperature and the saturation in order to help us do that. Okay, so. We're going to start, and then we'll come back into the sky, obviously. So we're going to start with our blue because it's a bluey gray. So it's mostly going to be blue, right? So we'll start with the dominant color. And then we're going to gray it. So in order to gray any particular color, we add uh, the complement. The complement would be orange, okay? So I'm going to use a little pinhead of the um, alizarin crimson. Whoop, I'm taking a little bit more. I just mucked up there and a little pinhead of this yellow ochre, our red and our yellow. Now let me show you that on the brush there, okay? There's our yellow and there's our red. So I'm talking literally a little pinhead and I'm gonna add that to that blue, okay? Add that to the blue and then we need to lighten it off because that color there would be too strong for something that's way off in the distance, a mountain range in the distance, okay? So we don't want this blue to be the blue that comes out of the tube because it will be too bright. And we want this mountain range to sit in the distance, in the background, okay? And if you just use that blue straight out of the tube, then it won't sit in the background. It will jump forward. So it has to be grayed back. So again, for those who've done our color mixing course, you'll know this. But for those who haven't, um, if you want to gray back a color, primary color, you add the complement to it. Now, I, I don't use an orange, so I just add a bit of red and a bit of yellow because I know that that's the complement. And those three colors then start to cancel each other out. And um, that's what we want. Now, just test that there. I'm going to just lighten it just a little bit because I know that my acrylics will dry darker. Okay, that's better. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to map in this mix that we've made for this distant mountain range. Uh, I'm just going to, now we're not colouring in here, those lines we put in earlier aren't to be followed religiously, they're, they're, um, they're there as a guide, okay, so we will use them, I see I come down over lines and I'm not a slave to those lines at all, this is important because if you try and colour in between those lines, it's not going to look right. It's going to look like you've coloured in. So don't be holding the brush here and trying to colour in. Grab it from down the back here so you've got a bit of looseness to it. Because we want to paint uh, you know, an atmospheric um, sort of landscape with a bit of a feel to it, you know, rather than finicky details. Okay. Now you can see it's, fair, it's a fair bit darker than that one. If I just put a little test up there. And uh, it's also a fair bit warmer. Okay. So there's more red in it this time. However, I don't want it to be quite that dark at this stage. Okay, you can see that there's a difference there. The reason why I don't want it to be quite that dark is because I've got a few steps to come. Okay. So if we use all of our, if we make too big of a jump between one layer and the next, it's going to be hard to do our foreground. Okay. So there's our mix. So I'm going to come into this tree here. And now if I put that up there, that, that's a little bit difficult to see. This is the ultimate test, right? Um, mixing it up there is one thing, but when you put it on the canvas and you compare to what you've already done, I'm going, no, that's, that's, I know they're going to dry darker, but then so is the background. So I'm just going to get a little bit more blue and red in that mix. Maybe I had it right before I put that second swipe of uh, um, titanium white in there. Okay, so... 
that's better. That hopefully you can now see that against um, against the background there that we've already done. So we'll just paint a little bit of a tree shirt. Don't make it a round lollipop. Okay, trees aren't like that. So give it a little bit of shape. Okay, and then I'm going to take that same mix. Uh, just going to indicate a couple of other little trees along the line there. And as that sits, that's probably this tree here is where I want that one, okay? So what I need to do, so I won't lose that completely, but I will add just a little bit of white into part of it. Okay, but I need to make probably too much white because it's about the same value as that one there. I'll just keep working that. And that's about it, I think. Let me just test that. Yeah, that's, you, know, you can see it's definitely darker than here. So, clearly darker than the, um, the distant mountains. So then we just work that in, out to the edge of the canvas there. Okay, see I've, I've kept a little bit of that blue mountain in there. I think that's important. And we'll just run a little bit out to there. And looking good, I'll just try a couple of little Spots. Now, notice the edges here, like the shapes are important. So this step two is all about blocking in the right color, the right value in the right place, but getting our shapes right. Notice that this tree sticks out there, then it comes in here and it's got a bit there and it's got these sort of mushroom shapes here, then it dips down, right? So I've created a, a feeling of randomness in there, which is important. If you just had a round line around it, it's going to look like a lollipop. The way I teach to paint acrylics at the Learn to Paint Academy and on Learn to Paint TV here, I teach it like we're using oils. Right? So you notice I'm not using any water here apart from when we did the drawing. Um, acrylics work best when you don't use, I, I think, when you don't use too much water and you use lots of paint. So that's what we do here. Okay. Now if it does dry out a little bit, I've got a little squirt bottle. Um, it gets hot here in the studio with all the lights and everything. So you can use a little squirt bottle, but I try and resist the temptation, okay? Now, I want this tree here to be our main dominant tree. It's going to be mostly in shadow. And I want it to be a darker value than these trees here, okay? You can see the steps, the depth starting to build, okay? From the background mountain to this tree, row of trees. This tree here is darker than this one. But this is the one we want to really punch up and have as much impact as we can. In there. So now I've got a nice powerful dark. If I pop that dark there, you can see it's a lot darker than um, what we've mixed previously, right? which is what you'd expect because we've got the cadmium red in there. Okay, now with this, I'm going to just paint some mushroom shapes up here. Got the sky coming through there in a moment. Okay. And again, so this is the shadow side, light's coming from over here. And we're going to keep that in mind that um, it might look a bit dark at the moment. However, work with me and we'll get there. So around about this stage when people see uh, our approach for the first time, if they've been used to following other people's methods for acrylic painting, it's around about this time that some people start to get concerned, <laughs> which is perfectly fine. But we've done this before. <laughs> so we know what we're doing. Okay, it's gonna be some tree trunks and things in there. And I wanna extend this tone now. Um, I'll just make it a little bit cooler, a little bit more blue. I'm gonna extend that through as a shadow tone. I'm just gonna move in there right across that foreground. Why, why do we, I mean, this is a great composition for this uh, painting because having a nice dark across the foreground of a, a painting, what that does is it makes the eye move around that and then into the painting and around, okay? So it's about controlling the eye. It's what um, a good art, or a great artist actually, um, by the name of Jack White, in one of his books he referred to it as being a threshold. Next thing is for us to get this field in, okay? The field is going to be green when we uh, put our going to step three, we don't want to start painting it green though. What I've found is when you're doing fields of green, if uh, you just paint green, then it gets a little bit heavy with the green. So what i found is if you block in first an earthy tone, which is a ready orange tone, um, and then put the greens over the top and allow just a little bit of that ready earth to come through, 
then it really sort of works well, it vibrates and harmonizes well. The yellow ochre here and the alizarin crimson. Okay, and that's how we're gonna mix those two together. And that's going to give us an earthy orangey tone. Okay, we don't want that at the back there because that's too strong. So we need to just lighten that off okay. a bit. And just cool it down a little bit. And by adding this blue, it'll cool it, but it'll also gray it. Okay, because things that are in the distance are a little bit grayer than things that are up close. And with that time, we can just start to work that in here now. Okay. Just working my way around that tree dark because it's still wet. It's a fair bit of paint on there, which is the reason why. Okay. okay, so now I'm going to do this in like third. So a third, a third, and then a third. So now what we need to do is just darken that up a little bit. A bit more yellow ochre, a bit more of the permanent crimson. Okay, and just a touch of the white now. Not so much, okay? And so you'll see this when I put it on, that we've got a fair jump there. It's a lot darker, it's a lot richer in color. Okay, don't worry about those lines too much. Just need to get back in there, so I'll get a little bit of white and I'll mix it on the side. Just get a lighter version, and then I'll just integrate those two together. And that'll help me get a nice transition there. So I'll just scrub the two areas together. Like so. So you don't want a band. You don't want to see, be able to see a physical band. You just want a nice gradient that flows through. Okay. Whoop, it's got a bit of blue in there. Not to worry. That'll just mix up our tones a little bit. Get a little bit of a dark patch in there, that's fine. So I need more crimson. So you can see this painting starting to take shape now, which is good. So I'll grab the rest of that permanent crimson, yellow lacquer. So let's just bring that in here now. Now remember we put the cadmium yellow and uh, cadmium red into this uh, main tree here. So if we get down to this plane, we need to echo that in our field. Because they're our most saturated colors and um, our darkest colors. And if we get it right, then we'll see a definite transition from the field color at the back to the field color here. I'm pretty confident that'll be the case. Okay, so right about there. And so now I'll use that same mix, but now I'll bring in the cad red and the cad yellow. Okay, now that's a little bit punchy, isn't it? That's pretty vibrant, a bit more yellow. Well, I'll, do, I'll introduce a little bit of the CAD, uh, the yellow ochre, and a little bit of the permanent crimson so that it still relates. That's feeling a bit orange to me. I'll get a little bit more yellow ochre in there. A touch of blue just to maybe pull it back a bit. And if you know, right, that's better. Yeah, that's going to work. So I'll just scrub that up into there, around our shadow. So hopefully you've learned a few things about aerial perspective today, like, you know, in the background, colors are lighter in value. They're not as saturated, so they're grayed off. And uh, they're also cooler, okay? As they come forward, they're more saturated, so more directly out of the tube would be a good way to think of it. 
and uh, the colors tend to be warmer and darker in value. Okay, hence the reason why this is dark and these are light in the background there, like so. And if you remember those few little things, and obviously the objects are bigger, like if this tree is the same size, it's gonna look smaller way off in the distance. That's pretty obvious, right? Um, but if you remember those few things about value, saturation, and um, temperature of color, you can get great depth and atmosphere into your paintings. Just okay, welcome back folks. Um, let this dry out now, it's looking pretty good. And uh, we're ready to start step three. And I think when we start pulling this painting together, it's gonna to come up quite a nice little, little uh, demonstration of a landscape for you. Uh, refreshed our paint here, we've got ultramarine blue, the permanent crimson yellow ochre, and titanium white. So we're gonna start with those trees at the back. I'm just gonna work forward and start to put some mid-tone and highlights on them and uh, a few details as we bring it up and, and this will turn out quite a good little painting. So what I'll do, I'll start off with these trees just in the background here. We don't want a lot of color in here, just a little bit. So in order to find the mid-tone and the highlight, our first real step is to get back to um, the color that we've already got up there. So if I mix, or well, close enough. So if I mix our blue and our red, and get that tone there. Just lighten it back a little, okay. And then what I can do is just take a little bit of that color and just test. And that's a little bit on the light side. A little bit more blue. But that's okay because we want to hot, you know, mid-tone and highlights to be lighter value. So what I'll do now is I'll just take some of this yellow here and a little pinhead of the red, and I'm gonna just warm that up, okay. A little bit more red, a little bit more yellow. Okay. And that will give us a tone that we can use as a mid-tone. Just get a little bit more yellow in there. Okay, so I'm just going to take a little bit of paint on the brush and I'm just going to apply the paint just lightly here. Just little touches because we don't want to uh, paint out those darks. Again, I don't want too much paint on the brush. And if I pop that up there, you can see that that green is more vibrant. I'm just gonna put a little pinhead of red in there. It's probably a little bit too vibrant now, so I'll just turn it back with some of that paint that's already there. I don't want it to be too big a jump. I want it to look like it all goes together, you know what I mean? Maybe a touch of yellow ochre in there. Connect it to the ones at the back a bit more. Darken that back a little in a few spots. Okay, so you can see now this tree here is definitely forward of that one. As we come in here now, we'll just try and punch it up just a little bit more. Although we don't have as much to do here because most of this is going to be in shadow, um, but there is a bit of light catching up here. Oh, be careful not to get that paint clumpy. Highlights in here and a little bit in through here as well. It's catching a bit of light. Most of it's in shadow tone though, so what I'll do is I'll mix up a 
darker version of this green. So let's just go. Don't want to have too much paint on there, so I'll pull a lot of it off, and then we'll just. So this is really like what I call a mid-tone, although I pushed it fairly dark, like so. It needs to be lightened off, and a little bit of red in there. Red being the complement of green. Okay, I'm just going to test this out back here. I've got a feeling that might be just a little touch too strong. So a little bit more white, a little bit more red. Okay, and that's getting more muted there. A little bit of paint on the end of the brush, so I'll squeeze that in. You want to have a look at this next to it. Okay, so that's more of a muted tone there, which is what we want. So I'll just run that through. There, now the key with this underpainting is we don't want to lose we don't want to block it all out and lose that underpainting because that underpainting can really serve us uh, to add you know a lot more interest to the greens that we're putting down here otherwise we just end up with a big block of green grass and uh, that get a bit boring you know so drag the brush lightly so that it doesn't come off in a clump and you'll find that you end up with that red showing through and of course as we come down closer to where we're standing here as the viewer, we need to start to bring this tone up and make this warmer, more vibrant. And I'm using a variety of different strokes. Some are up and down, and some are horizontal. I'm dragging the brush across, getting some variations in there. you've done with a brighter tone if you get a bit dark okay and now it's getting more vibrant again as we come down I'll get a bit more blue and red blue and green blue and yellow right So I'm using cadmium yellow light, not for any particular reason, it was just what I had out. Uh, if you're using a medium, then you'll probably have a darker tone, which is perfectly fine. Okay. So getting more vibrant as we come down, but don't get too vibrant too early, which is what I suspect I've just done, because, which I'll, so I'll correct that, the reason why you don't want to get too vibrant too early is you'll have too much of that vibrant tone in there and it'll be, uh, it'll be difficult to look at. So you want to eat just a little bit of that really vibrant tone is what we want. So I'm just going to take some of this permanent crimson and some white. And we'll work on that path a little bit. A 
bit of yellow ochre into it so it's not too pink. I just want to get a little bit more sort of movement and life in there. I'm not going to paint it all out, of course. This becomes sort of the brightest, sort of lightest part of the painting. Okay. But it's important, see I've got these little bits of the blue coming through from that background mountain. That's important because that creates layers and depth in a painting. You don't want to ever lose that. And you want to be thinking about that from the sort of the outset of your painting. Over on this side, I'll just get a little bit of water with that, it's not moving as well as I'd like. Over on this side there, there's some broken logs and twigs and things. Hope you've enjoyed this week's episode of Learn to Paint TV. I know I certainly have. And um, make sure you check out all the episodes of Learn to Paint TV. I'll pop the web address underneath me, but it's www.learntopaint.tv. And uh, make sure you visit also the Learn to Paint Academy. Now, the Learn to Paint Academy, um, I'll put a link underneath me here. If you uh, click on the free course button um, on the Learn to Paint Academy, you can take a full free course where I go into all this in a lot more detail. I break it down, you know, the steps, the colors, brushes, everything into a lot more detail on the simple approach that we use. And, uh, you know, it definitely works for beginners and intermediate painters. We've had 25,000 people around the world now go through our courses. And every day I get emails from people or comments or messages from people saying uh, how much it's changed their ability to be able to paint, which just makes me feel, uh, feel great to be able to help people learn to paint. So I hope you've enjoyed this one. I think it's come up a nice little landscape painting. Um, good one to have a go at, so give it a go at home. And I look forward to seeing you next week on Learn to Paint TV. Cheers for now.